Live, I'm Carla Gebhardt alongside Mike Lissette. And Mike, apparently on Mint Street, when it rains, it pours. Yeah, another tough day for the Panthers. However, it's not the only thing we're talking about tonight on CSL. We're catching up with Hornets rookie Brandon Miller as he tries his hand in another sport. Plus, all the big de details on the big party coming this week yep. ahead of Carolina's home opener. But tonight, Frank Reich likely in no mood to jam. That's right, and with good reason because he is down another player. Cliche, next man up. So who is going to be stepping up in the trenches with the Panthers? Chandler Zavala started at right guard against Atlanta, but played on the left side with Iki Aquano most of his college career. Obviously, Nash Jansen listed as the second string left guard behind Christensen, but we could see some different combinations uh, for Coach Frank Reich and the Panthers. Carla, how are you feeling about this? I'm not, not feeling really good right now. Not good, especially, and I said this earlier today on Queen City News, is that you do expect these big injuries to happen, right? But not all on week one, not early in the season. They'll be relocated around Bank of America Stadium Sunday morning for fans to experience. I can smell what that rock is cooking. <laughs> Another uh, quick international break. Uh, Charlotte FC back on the pitch at home. First time since August this coming weekend. The boys have nearly a clean bill of, bill of health to get ready for a stretch run. That includes four matches throughout the second half of September. DC United comes to town this weekend. Every match between these teams has ended with a 3 0 final, but DC does hold the advantage 2 1. Charlotte, a lot of draws here, so they are just looking to stack up some points. You can feel it on even the 75th minute where we're. Don't go to bed just yet. We've got Charlotte Sports Live coming your way. He's Gabe McDonald. I'm Michael Set, and I think we're ready to go here. Yeah, we're absolutely, man. I mean, it's been a good week so far, and we're about to cap it off. we got a lot coming up on CSL leading up to a big primetime matchup on Monday night. Monday night football, the Saints coming to town. we got a one-on-one. -on -one. All right, thank you very much, Carla. Now, we know a little more about the plan at the position. Here's the available bodies Coach Camp will have against Saints. Big thing that stands out is the youth of this group. Uh, they probably wouldn't get a lot of my jokes uh, about 80s and 90s pop culture. Many of them getting their first taste in the NFL. You sometimes get my uh, pop culture. Yeah, I understand them a lot. I mean, we're, you know, I'm, I'm a bit younger, but I, you know, I'm a bit yeah. of an old head, so to speak. I got that old soul to me. But when you look at this upcoming week on the offensive line, it's tough. Losing Brady Christensen, having both of your starting guards out. Obviously, we hope we can get Austin Corbett back at some point. But it's going to be a big opportunity for a guy like Hanash Jensen. And you want to see Chandler Zavala take that next step. I think personally that maybe they should look into moving him to left guard. I know he has a lot of continuity being there at right guard, but playing on that left side with A.K. Aquano, I think that would fit this line better. But it's just crazy I'm how nervous. the difference the yep. difference between this time last year and right now, I mean, that I offensive I like line it. was solid. I'm, I'm nervous. It's, I mean, it's I'm rough. nervous a lot yeah. about this stuff. I think that, like, even going with someone like Icky, who we yeah. thought this was going to be his year this year, I was talking to Al Wallace over the weekend. I said, what's going on with him? And Al seemed to think that, like, there was a lot of things that, that, that he didn't progress in yeah. terms of like you know blocking for the run, he's always blocking for the pass right. or something. So th there's just it's just it's just it's just tricky. And then I think you know as far as the the young guys, we were talking off camera. They caught Cam Irvin. Yep. I mean, wouldn't it have been great if that, they had somebody veteran, yeah. that could have just just been on the field and right. been a player coach to say, hey, we need to figure this out. This is what we need to do. They don't have that anymore. Yep. I'm concerned. And I think that was something big for Icky last year, having him. That's why he was able to progress so much later in the season. You know, not having that veteran presence definitely hurts. But, you know, this offensive line, they're going to be tested because the Saints come in with a pretty solid defensive line. So Monday will be interesting and a big measuring stick for sure going forward. But let's move back to the defensive side of the ball. Linebacker Frankie Luvu, an earth guy and somebody that's really emerged as, you know, a guy that nobody was really talking about. And look at what he did last year. Now he's in yet another contract year. So you really want to be see him be able to step up his game. But this is a guy that really, the, you know, this team kind of rise and dies with. And Frank Reich said he's a seal of the century. I mean, he's a guy that, you know, was undrafted coming out of Washington State and now he's emerged as one of the top young linebackers in the league. So I think this is a year where he takes that next step for sure. No, he's got to. Because yeah. As you just mentioned a second ago, this is the final year of his contract. He wants to get paid. Yeah. He wants to make the Pro Bowl. And, I mean, judging by how he did in that first game, there were not a lot of many highlights for the True. Carolina Panthers. He was definitely one of them. So you take off what he started last year, building off of that yeah. in terms of what his goals are. Can't ask for a better start than what he did over the weekend. Absolutely. A guy that just has a true nose for the football, pretty much a guy that they can move around. Another chess piece, if you will. So definitely a guy that should have another big impact 
for the team this year. And of course, it is week two for the Panthers, and it will be in prime time. A big Monday night football matchup for another NFC South showdown, this time with Derek Carr and the Saints coming to town. And since we are the best place for Panthers coverage, we are bringing you not one, but two Black and Blue kickoff lives. We have a full hour-long show on Sunday at 10 a.m., then a special half hour coming up on Monday at 6.30 p.m., leading you right to kickoff. If you missed anything during the week, don't you dare worry. We've got you covered on QCNews.com. All the exclusive features, got the interviews and content. You need to be informed, ready to watch the Panthers every single week. And we're telling you, it's more than any other station in the Carolinas. Again, all that and more on QCNews.com. We are 24 hours away from CSL The Blitz, but we've got some great news. We're blitzing right now. Yeah, we're not doing an engage aid, more like, you know, a bullets double A gap blitz. So that's right, a bunch of high school games wrapping up tonight. Let's take you through a few of them. We're going to start over at Providence, a big cat battle. Elsewhere, Myers Park looking to give previously undefeated Marvin Ridge a second straight loss. Third quarter, things not going well at all for the Mavs, down 17 0. They got their first score of the game off that touchdown card catch from Mark Arthur. Marvin Ridge cut the lead to 10. However, they would get no closer. Mustangs coming right back. Wendell Thompson, Miles Balcom. That made it 24-7 Myers Park, and that would be the final as well. Second straight loss for Myers Park. Well, it's the second straight win for the Mustangs. And how about, well, if Christmas is the most wonderful time of year, this has got to be the worst, the deadest part of the NBA calendar. But the league is still finding ways to make news. The Board of Governors unanimously approved tougher resting policy rules, punishments for star players who sit out games, including those on national TV and in-season tournaments. The rule would give the NBA more authority to find teams than they sit players. The NBA defines a star player as someone who has made the all-star team or as an all-NBA team in any of the previous three seasons. On the Hornets, that is just a mellow ball. Uh, somewhere, I think, like, Red Arbach is just yeah. like, spinning in his grave thinking of the fact that this is happening, but yeah. it's a reality. And, and although I'm a fan of people's you know, well-being and overall health, True. it's been abused. And, and I think it's sad that we've got to do this now yeah. Because it's not just guys sitting because they're they're yeah. they're they're not doing well. It's just guys saying this game doesn't matter. I'm not going to play exactly. it. Exactly. It's like a, oh, it's a rand. Like even a guy like Jason Tatum, who's kind of been you know talking a lot about the Hornets. You know, maybe give him you know catching trades yeah. a little bit. No, he's like, oh, it's, oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a it's a random Monday league pass game. I'm not going to play. Like, but I think the big thing is you got these fans that spend their hard earned money. When you think about team West Coast teams coming here for only one game, LeBron coming here. For one game, the Suns. It's a big story. The, that's the thing. It's a big story. If LeBron's legitimately hurt, right. he's not going to play. Yeah. I mean, it's it's what everyone's talking right. around around town. Oh man, this was the one shot that you had didn't to see get that to see it. What, what's what's scary about it is you don't want to see somebody actually playing when they shouldn't be playing, and True. they don't want to do this. So right. that's that's the downside of it. The one thing I do like about it is they they have created situations now where if you're going to make the All Star team or you're going to win an award, you have to play now yeah. a certain amount of games. I think that is what's going to amp up the incentive for guys to play because, you know, it's one thing. You don't want to say you don't want to yeah. play against the Hornets on a Monday. It's another thing where that makes a difference between you getting an MVP trophy yep. or winning a six-man. Extra incentive in, in, your, in your contract. And for in terms of history. Right. You, know, you, you, you know, I didn't win that year because I only played in, 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 in X 48 amount of games. games. Like, well, that's, that's too bad. That's, yep. that's history right there. I think so. that's a big thing, too, when you factor that in. It's like, you know, guys that are, you know, chasing that, you know, you have a little bit more motivation to play now. And I think – that's something that we'll see, but it's just it's unfortunate that we've gotten to this point. Yeah. The load management has definitely gotten kind of out of whack. You so gotta we'll cut, you gotta cancel games, but they're yeah. not gonna do that. So that's what they have to do. Yeah. So we'll see just how interesting that will make the season coming up this year. But on this date in history, a little blast.